and welcome to another episode of RC Printer. I'm your host Jordan Visco and today we're going to be building the MJet 35 pump for RC jet boats. Now the MJet 35 is the bigger brother of this guy right here which is the pump used on the popular MJet Super Sprint. Uh, the main difference being that the MJet 35 is just a whole lot bigger. The MJet 35 can also take a much more powerful motor that can push an RC boat way faster than uh, the Super Sprint here. And because of that the MJet 35 uses a mix of not just plastic 3D printed parts but also an aluminum 3D printed impeller and a couple of laser cut aluminum parts as well. So today we're going to build one. Now the MJet 35 uh, does not come with a hull when you find the files on CG Trader. If you're interested, I'll have a link in the description below. But it is meant to be integrated into a few different RC hulls. Uh, there's one called the Ragnarok, another one called the Valkyrie Jet Ski, a fiberglass one you can build called the 4G hull, and there's also hulls by other designers like the Bash Speed and Cruise Jet Boat series by Vasa Designs. Again, I'll have links to all those in the description below. Now you could also design your own hull for it, uh, or you could take a fiberglass hull you might have lying around, or an aluminum hull that you want to build, and you can add your MJet 35 to that if you'd like as well. Now today we're just going to be building the MJet 35 pump, and then I'm hoping you guys can help me decide which hull to put it into. If you can let me know in the comments which hull you'd like to see uh, built and integrated with the MJet 35, let me know, and I'll be sure to do a future video. Now for the 3D printed plastic pieces today, we're going to be using a brand new printer, and that's this guy right here. This is the Bamboo Labs P1S. They sent this to me free last week. And I've been doing a whole bunch of test prints over the last week, and i got to say I am very impressed with this printer. Uh, it came with this AMS up here, so it's got filament switching capabilities. Normally I do most of my RC car printing on a couple of Prusa uh, Mark 3S, Mark 3S Pluses, and uh, I'm very impressed with the quality with those, but the quality of the Bamboo P1S is every bit as good as those. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier to set up. The integration with the slicer and slicing and sending files directly to the printer is amazing and uh, very seamless. You don't have to worry about messing around with Prusa Connect or with uh, Octoprint if that's something that you've been playing around with. But the thing that really blows me away about this printer is how fast it is. Today we're going to be printing out all of our MJet 35 pieces on one build plate and the Bamboo Lab P1S is going to be able to do that in about five and a half hours. Whereas with my Prusa Mark III's, it would have taken 22 and a half hours. So that's over four times as long. So if this thing can print things out four times as fast as my other printers, I'm going to be able to do a lot more builds. And uh, that's really exciting. Just for comparison, I did slice up the same model with uh, a newer Prusa, the Mark IV. And uh, I got 19 and a half hours. So still many times faster than even the updated Prusa models. Now, I'm sure if I wanted to increase the speed of my Prusa printers, I probably could. I might sacrifice build quality a little bit. Uh, but I can print faster with the bamboo as well, and uh, with the five and a half hour print speed uh, you'll see in a minute, we're going to get very, very high quality prints. Now the P1S also comes with this awesome enclosure, so it keeps the heat inside for the printing. Uh, it also has a light inside, and there's a video camera automatically integrated. Uh, so we're going to be able to get a nice little video of the prints that we do. Now today we're going to be printing in PLA, and normally I would use this uh, awesome little AMS up here. But the color that I want to do comes on this big 3 kilogram roll. This is eSun uh, PLA Plus there, and it doesn't fit into the AMS nicely. So I've just fed it into the back of the printer, and we're going to uh, print right off that roll. All right, that's enough blabbing. I'm going to head over to my computer, press the Go button, and uh, let's see this thing in action. All right, the print is done, let's go check it out. Once it's cooled down, the pieces pop off the build plate really easy. You can see here the print quality is really, really nice. So that's awesome, and the best part is it took about a quarter of the time that it normally would. Thank you so much Bamboo Labs for sending me this new printer, and I'd highly recommend checking uh, one of these Bamboo Labs P1S's out if uh, new printer's on your shopping list. Alright, so now we have the plastic printed parts for our new MJet 35. Now we need some hardware, so I've got that assembled down on my desk here. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here's pretty much everything we're going to need for building the MJet 35. First off, we have an assortment of screws, washers, a nut, 
Uh, we're going to need some bearings, we're going to need a couple of FKM seals, we're going to need some heat set inserts, uh, we're going to need a 5mm to 5mm shaft coupler, we're going to need some rod, 5mm, 3mm, and some 3x4mm brass tube. This is all going to get cut to size, uh, various lengths, for different parts of the MJet 35. Uh, so these are some of the electronics that we have that are going to go into the build. I'm not entirely certain what motor we're going to use yet when we set up our boat. Uh, just because I'm not entirely certain what hull we're going to use. So right now we're just going to use this 3660 as a placeholder and we can uh, update that later when we're ready to put it in a boat. This is a 20 kilogram waterproof servo and I use it in a lot of my builds. It works really well so I'm hoping it'll work great here as well. Now we're also going to need a few pieces of specialty hardware uh, which we have here. So first off we have this one. This is a two-stage impeller and this was actually 3D printed out of aluminum and I got this done by PCBWay. Uh, they actually sent this to me for free, uh, which is amazing. And to get it built, all I had to do was log into their website, upload my STL file, wait for a quote, and then once that quote was processed, I just had to wait for it to arrive in the mail. Now the 3D printing process used for this is called SLM, or Selective Laser Melting, which is a process whereby you take a build plate and you spread a thin layer of metal powder dust across it, and then a laser fuses a 2D slice of the object, and another thin layer of metal dust powder goes across it and then that layer gets fused to the layer below and that keeps happening layer by layer until you have an object like this and as you can see the quality of the print is actually very very good the overhangs print really nicely because there's uh, dust all throughout the print as it's printing so that can support the layers above it so definitely very impressed with this one SLM is definitely a pretty amazing process and it requires some very expensive machinery so it's really cool to see that PC Bayway can offer uh, that affordably to people I think a part like this probably cost about 30 or 40 bucks to have printed now because you have an SDL file, you could just print this out of plastic, uh, but it's not going to last too long just because of the force that we're going to put through it. Uh, you definitely want to get an aluminum impeller if you're building in the MJet 35. If you're building the MJet 30 or if you're building uh, the Super Sprint, plastic's going to be just fine, but for the MJet 35, uh, it's definitely recommended to have an aluminum impeller. So the next two things you're going to need are these two laser cut pieces here. These are also made by PCBWay. When you buy the MJet 35 files, you not only get the STL files for parts, but you also get DXF files for these, which are uh, laser cutting files. If you go to a company like PCBWay again, or one of their competitors, and tell them what material you want them to cut with. In this case, we use two millimeter aluminum sheet. That's all they need to get you a quote and uh, start the cutting process. Now these two pieces are just blanks and they're gonna need some finishing before we can put them into our boat. These laser cut holes are gonna need to be drilled a little bit uh, because there's countersunk screws that are gonna go into them. And this ride plate right here is gonna need bending. So we're gonna heat this up and anneal it and then we're gonna bend it into shape using a 3D printed guide uh, that comes with the MJet 35 files as well. All right, so thanks so much, uh, PCBWay, for sending these to us. We're going to go ahead now, and we'll finish off our aluminum pieces, and then we'll get all our rod cut to shape, and then we'll start assembling. <laughs> All right, there we go, that's perfect. The screws are sitting flush. Now we'll go ahead and anneal this so that we can bend it a bit easier and then uh, we'll bend it in the vise. All right, so we've heated it up with the torch and now we're just gonna let it cool down nice and slow. All right, that's pretty cool now. So we'll take it out of our vise grips. And now we're gonna bend the two sides at 45 degrees. And for that, we're gonna use this little bending guide. Put it in our vise like this. We're gonna make sure the bends go away from the countersunk bits. So we'll put it in like that. All right, so that bent a little bit, but definitely not enough. We certainly destroyed our bending guide here. So I'm gonna have to go and reprint this again. We'll use more walls and stronger infill and hopefully we can get it done better this time. 
Okay, so we reprinted our 3D printed bending tool here. This one's printed with four walls and 100% infill. Also, we re-annealed our ride plate here. Uh, so hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to bend, but uh, let's throw it back in the vise and we'll see how it goes. All right, that worked much better than the first time. Let's do the other side. There we go. One ride plate complete. Okay, next we're going to take care of some of our handmade parts here. Our water cooling tubes are already cut to size, and we're going to do our drive shaft, and we're going to do our steering shaft. All right, now we're going to file down a flat spot, uh, 15 millimeters long. All right, so we're pretty close there. We'll check our impeller and just make sure it's the right size. Should be 93.4 millimeters long. That's perfect. And so now we'll go and create our steering shaft. One thing about the steering shaft here, just make sure that when you're filing down each end that you do it on the exact same side. Perfect, that's our steering shaft. Now we just need two 38 millimeter long motor mount pins out of three millimeter rod and one 22 millimeter steering pin. All right, that's all the handmade bits finished off. I ground off all of the jagged edges with a little grinder, so it's all good to go. We can go ahead and start assembly.
All right, now it's a time to assemble our drive shaft. So we'll slide our drive shaft in. There we go, there's our completed MJet 35 pump. All right, we're all set up for a test here. Turn our controller on, turn our speed controller on. Check our steering. And our motor. Let's go put it in the water. Pretty neat, huh? All right, so that's pretty much all the time we have today to play around with our nifty new MJet 35 pump. Please let me know in the comments below which of those boats that I showed you earlier you think would be best to install it on, and I'll make sure to 3D print one of those, and uh, we'll get her going on the lake. Thanks again to Bamboo Labs for sending me that awesome new P1S printer. I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of use out of that. And thanks also to PCBWay for sending me that 3D printed aluminum impeller. Uh, as well as the laser cut items on the bottom. So if you're looking at getting some of these done, make sure you check them out. And you can also check our website, rcprinter.com, because I do plan on having kits for the MJet 35 pump available very, very soon. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like or subscribe. It really helps us out. And as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of fun 3D printable remote control projects like this one to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, make sure you check out our website at rcprinter.com.